So in the past two videos, we've learned about solving quadratic equations, uh, one where we didn't have to factor, the second one where factoring was our method. That factoring being your method is your primary, uh, your primary thing you're gonna do throughout high school. You're gonna do a ton of that. Um, but when all else fails, completing the square uh, is always an option. So this is not gonna be your most common way of solving equations, but when other things don't work out, uh, this is a way of doing it. Um, so here we go. Here we have uh, 12 equals x squared plus 6x. Now you might think, oh, well, let me factor out an x of this side and we'll have uh, x times x plus 6 equals 12. That doesn't do any good because zero product property can't be used unless the other side is equal to zero. So you can't do that. So you might think, well, let's move the 12 over. Uh, let's Let's look at uh, x squared plus 6x minus 12. See if we can factor that, which we cannot because uh, with a negative 12, uh, we need two things that have a difference of six that multiply to 12 and nothing does that. Um, but we are going to imagine just like we did in the other videos, a graph of an equation and, and this will be the corresponding equation that goes with this graph. So we're, we'll talk about this in a little bit. All right, so our first step, instead of factoring anything, instead of moving the 12 over, is gonna to be to complete the square here. So completing the square, that means we're gonna wind up with something squared, that something is gonna be x plus three. That means we wind up having to add a nine here, and we have to add a nine to the other side, and we wind up with x plus three squared equals 21. And then to solve, we, this is now like one of the equations in the, in the first video, um, kind of in quote unquote vertex form a little bit. Um, to solve, we're gonna take the square root of both sides. So we wind up with plus or minus square root of 21 equals x plus three. This is what you really wind up with is the absolute value of x plus three equals 21 or root 21 and then the plus or minus come in, but that's okay. Um, so the plus three here needs to be moved over. So we have to subtract three. So we wind up with x equals negative three uh, plus root 21 or negative three minus root 21. Those are your two solutions. Now think of this, root 21 is, uh, well 21 is in between 16 and 25. So it's about four and a half. It's about four and a half. So this is, um, if we add uh, four and a half to negative three, we wind up with about one and a half. And if we subtract negative three, uh, if we subtract four and a half from negative three, we get about negative seven and a half. Okay, so those are your two solutions to this equation if y is equal to zero. So that means that those two values, approximately those two values, are your x-intercepts. So if you go to graph this, if you go to graph this, um, we might think of our x-intercepts as being here at one and a half and over here at negative seven and a half. All right, we're also gonna fi figure from this form here, this negative 12 is our, is our um, y-intercept, all right? And you can also get your vertex because this is kind of in vertex form. If you think about this, this relates to um, y equals x, plus three quantity squared minus 21. So your vertex here is three, or negative three rather, uh, negative 21. Negative three, negative 21 down here. And right at the bottom, negative three, negative 21. All right, so we can now graph this because we have our, our zeros, our vertex, our y-intercept, a little uneven. It's supposed to look a little more rounded. All right, and we can graph our equation. But solving the equation is this completing the square thing, the plus nine, plus nine, 21, take a square root of both sides and solve, okay?